Now, my uh, next guest has a thousand watt voice to match his power packed presence. He's one of the world's most popular heavy rock stars. His album, Bat Out of Hell, has been in the UK charts for a staggering 295 weeks. Not bad, eh? His current single, Modern Girl, looks set to storm up the charts, and he's over here now for a major British tour. Welcome, almighty <laughs> Meatloaf. Oh, thank can you. Can I thank call you. you Meat? Yes, you can. Excellent. I, wanted, I was worried about that. Let, uh, let's talk about the name. How, I've heard so many versions of how you got the name Meatloaf. Tell me uh, about which, one. Which, uh, which version would you like well, to hear now? I love the Volkswagen. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite one, too. I like that one. So I'll tell you that story. Uh, actually, these stories are true. They just have nothing to do with how I got my name, but it's okay. I love the story. When I was in high school, we were, um, I was a, in America, I was a, like a jock, right? I played football and baseball and all this stuff. And so one night about midnight during football season, uh, we were out to drinking a few beers, and uh, somebody bet me $100 that I wouldn't let the front wheel of a Volkswagen roll over my head. And so <laughs> I just put my head down on the thing, the Volkswagen wheel rolled over my head, I got the $100 and had a bad headache. You know, other than that, that's uh, but it has not changed your personality one jot. No, it, yeah. it altered it then, but not since then. No. Yeah. We've got Phil Lineup back with us again. Phil, thanks for right. uh, thanks for coming back. One thing that unites both of you fellas that in an age of rouge, mascara, we had and the same skirts, and I'm talking well. about, I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, what we're a united because we have the same mother. We're not brothers, just the same. Hi, mom. Yeah. <laughs> what a remarkable genetic <laughs> yeah, fact. Right. We're indebted to you for that. <laughs> but anyway, in an age when it's all rouge, mascara, and maybe slightly small voices, you guys deliver. Why do you think you came to to prominence with basically what a voice that wasn't part of its time? Why do I think I? I came? mean, in other words, do you not feel sometimes that you're a late 60s sound in terms of the way you actually, deliver. I, actually, I feel I actually I feel more in tune with the 50s, uh, and I always say I think I was born too late. You know, that's how I feel a lot of the times. Yeah. You know, it's like because the old the old stuff. It's like when we go on stage. You know, sometimes we like I put in like an old song each each tour, a different old song, and those are always the ones that you know. It's like they, they seem very natural. I mean, mm -hmm. things like uh, the new stuff that we do, and some of this stuff, Matt mm -hmm. on the Hell, is very natural. But uh, it's a, I have a more empathy with the the 50s mm -hmm. stuff instead of the 60s. That uh, 60s was a bit psychedelic, and we, uh, could, we can talk. They were always talking about greenhouses and purple fields with red trees above <laughs> marshmallow moons. You know, yeah. and that didn't. I don't. Good I don't. Feel. No, they don't fit with me, and I don't understand that. <laughs> Listen, this, this record, Bad Out of Hell, we mentioned, this was a phenomenon. We can talk forever about your voice, but why don't we hear it? Let's go one better. Oh. Your latest record is Modern Girl, and it really is a belter. Ah. Let's have a look at that. And Wonderful once again, song. the old bikes are in prominence. Oh, yeah, oh, they? yeah, the bikes. Great. The video director, and, and uh, I just let him go on this one, and it's like the shot you just had there. I went to this little, this, uh, this girl, little girl, I'm going to say. She was little, but she's yeah. not a young girl, but... She's a, a real motorcycle racer, and she's like a real human being, a real person. Right. And uh, people objected to me going to her in, in the video and put my arm around her. I said, absolutely not. That's a real person I'm putting my arm around, and that's, I made, made me feel good about that. We've got another great deliverer here, Phil Lynott. And there's one thing that unites you two guys. You both nearly lost something. You nearly lost your hearing, did you not, Phil? Yeah, nearly lost a few things in return, <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> but tell, tell us about it. I mean, quite seriously. Well, at, one, when... at one stage... Um, uh, we we were doing about 50 dates on the trot, and we were we were playing in America, and in America the the venues are much bigger, so you use a lot more amp amplification. Yeah. And I made the mistake of standing in front of the lead guitar player's <laughs> amplifier for a little too long, <laughs> and you didn't hear a word. So uh, that night I heard ringing in my ears. So yeah. I uh, I. I thought it was serious, so I got a doctor around, and of course, doctors, they're very conscientious, and they always play safe, and they went, if I were you, I wouldn't do that again, <laughs> which I, I'd learned the lesson by then. Well, to lose your hearing is uh, pretty crucial, isn't it? But to, to lose your voice, which you did. Well, I, I did that by standing in front of my own monitors for too long, <laughs> I think, you know? Uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't, uh, well, I, did I didn't lose my, I didn't, I didn't, and I tell you what happened was, after after bad, I mean, I I've been I've been in rock and roll bands and, and theater and different things since 1966. So, uh, but I never dealt with something that became a multi-million dollar business, and it was sort of a an awakening for me. You know, um, I mean, I have a, the foundation and all that, and it wasn't like overnight, but it was a a real awakening to see 
I sort of, my thing is now to see the snakes in the grass and they were poisonous. And it was sort of, I didn't like that. I mean, I liked it. I wanted to make records and tour. And I never thought of anything else other than just doing that. And, uh, and when it was over, I sort of rebelled. Yeah. And the only way for me to rebel so that I didn't have to do anything, I think, was just say, I can't sing. And so I convinced myself I couldn't. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I just sort of like dropped out. You know, it's like a, a, right. a, a rock and roll dropout. And there's, and, <laughs> there's certain singers as well who have very delicate voices, who, who if they do a lot of uh, sort of engagements, their voice will go and they, they need a long while yeah. for it to recover. And some people, if they push it too hard, if they keep, it can do permanent damage. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I mean, Meatloaf has a voice <coughs> like me own it, that uh, the harshness is half the, uh, well, the texture. Sort of. <laughs> of, <laughs> if well, it is when you get on the road, it is the texture. We're grateful you know. for it. Meat, I think you've lost weight. In fact, you look like a slice of salami. Do you like good cliches? <laughs> <laughs> because after the break, oh, we're going after the break you're going to be in Rusty's kitchen. I know kitchen. all about Rusty. I heard all about That'll Rusty. That'll solve I'm your weight problem. Go see Rusty. <laughs> Rusty! <laughs> <laughs> Who needs advertising? Let's take a break. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you all. Now, uh, from birthdays, really, to a, a, a far sadder thing from many of us who uh, knew personally the person that's involved in our next bit, because instead of our usual pop video, we're paying special tribute to a great rock star who sadly died this weekend. Phil Linnett, former Thin Lizzy singer, lost an 11-day battle for his life after collapsing on Christmas Day. Now, Phil was on this programme just over a year ago when he spoke very openly to me about his fight against the drug-taking habit. Uh, first of all, I don't, I don't particularly think that I was an addict mm. as such. I messed around with it enough, and I know enough addicts. Second of all, I don't think the battle is over. The battle never actually ends mm. with the drug. The, the frightening thing about heroin is that, and w again, without trying to glamorise the drug at all, is that it is very enjoyable to take. Mm. It's, it's, it, it cuts off reality. If you've got a lot of problems and you want to just... So it's very easy to, mm. you know, I mean, it's so easy. It'd be so easy for me to just jump up on television and say, mm. hey, this is the pits, don't do it. Yeah. The, the thing that's never put across on television very well is how enjoyable it can be. Mm. But in that, after after that initial after you go through that initial phase it becomes then you become dependent on the drug now i never got to the to the stage where i became so addicted that my body craved mm. uh you know like physically for it but mentally that battle will will continue for the rest of my life mm. Yes, Phil Linnett there, who is taking part in a sort of special programme on, on uh, drug taking. And, uh, and that's who those other people That's right. Are. And I think the double sadness was that, that, A, that he was a very eloquent man, actually, as you probably got a hint of there, but also a genuinely nice man. He was in no sense uh, starstruck or aloof. No, a very gentle person. Yes, but at least there's one, one good thing about Phil Linnett, and that is he's left a legacy for all of us to enjoy. And that, of course, was uh, his music. So, in tribute to uh, the man himself, here's the last great hit that Phil made with Gary Moore. It's called Out in the Fields. And as Phil explained, it owed an awful lot to his roots in Northern Ireland. Here it is. And I'm proud to be an Irishman because uh, Ireland is a special place. Most of the time you read about the Troubles, but from Ireland comes a lot of great art. Maybe because of the Troubles and maybe because of the beauty. Jimbo, are you happy with your levels? Let's kick it in. Okay. Phil, if you can take the verses, please. Gary, the bridges, and... Bill Linnett with uh, Gary Moore. Some great sounds there, out in the fields. And uh, if you haven't got that, go out and buy it, perhaps, as a final tribute to uh, Phil Linnett. Anyway, time now for the weather...